Straightallday.com. You are now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work. Or maybe we reinforce it. Maybe you know these things. You listen to the show often enough. But discipline to show up day after day to do the work. The confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically. The mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there. Even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And the personal initiative to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And what we do. On top of all that is we put it all together for you. We going to, we put this all together into one system. We put it together into one unifying philosophy, one framework. We wrote a book on the subject. We have an entire university dedicated to the subject. And it is all called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is do you build or do you buy? This is you will do one or the other. You will understand this. Uh, this is a, a metaphorical topic, but it is also, also you can take this literally, and I'll explain that all, you'll know exactly what I mean as we get into this. And before we get started, let you all know this episode is brought to you by the good folks at Working Your Game Incorporated and Work On Your Game University, where you will learn exactly, first of all, from the inside out, what type of person do you need to be? Then, how do you translate that being into an actual plan and strategy? And then how do you turn that plan and strategy into actual results? If you're looking for any one of those three, if you got two out of the three, if you have zero out of three, you should join us over at WorkingYourGameUniversity.com. We got levels. We got different things for everybody. Whatever you need, we have it there. So, again, that's at Working Your Game University. Now, today's topic, topic again, is build or buy. I heard a guy named Mike Mark Joyner, who's a well-known uh, online digital marketer, probably a legend in the digital marketing world. He, I heard him talking about this, and it's a question that... Any one of us has to ask when the topic is adding to what we do. You don't have to be a digital marketer or even an entrepreneur to have to answer this question. Whenever you're adding to what we do, so you have these skills that you already have and these tasks that you already take care of, but there's an additional task that needs to be handled that is not in your wheelhouse right now. It's an additional thing that needs to be done that is not something that you normally do. So you got two choices. You can either build, which means you create it yourself and do all the work yourself to get that uh, challenge handled, or you can buy, which means you go get that result from somewhere else. It is already, the result is already pre-made, is already ready, or at least close to it, at least much further ahead than if you had tried to do it yourself. Now, the important, there are important questions to answer when it comes to building or buying, because this is an option. You have to choose between the two. Maybe you can choose a hybrid, but you do have to choose because both of these incur some form of investment. And we know from episode number 609 that there are five forms of investment, time, money, attention, energy, and focus. So if you're going to build something from scratch, you're going to have to make some of these investments. And if you're going to buy something, I mean, go get it and it already exists and just incorporate it into what you have and what you're doing, it's going to require an investment as well. So this build or buy question is one that uh, we all answer actually all the time. We all answer this question all the time. You may not have thought about it like this, but now that I'm explaining it, especially once we get into our points here today, you understand that you're actually answering this question all the time with the actions that you take. So let's get into it, and I'll give you plenty of examples, and you'll know exactly what I mean. Point number one, topic once again is build or buy. When you need something, which one are you going to do? Let's talk about building first. Building means if you need something done, you either develop the skills or maybe you already have the skills and you just allocate the time and you do it yourself. For example, if, for example, I have this show, this audio show here. Every episode of this show, there are several things that need to happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once the recording is done, several things need to happen. Right? First of all, the audio needs to get uploaded into, a, into cloud storage. That I do myself. So after the audio is done, I upload it into cloud storage. That I can do myself. It only takes two clicks of a button. Then the next thing is someone needs to edit the audio to check, take out if I clear my throat or if I cough or you know, there's some sound that happens in the background that wasn't expected or I move away from the mic and or I get too close to the mic and just making the levels work and just making it sound even and making this the sound of the show very professional, which many people have told me that the sound of the show is quite professional. That needs to be done by somebody. So knowing that that needs to be done or deciding that that needs to be done, because I don't have to do that. I could just put it out raw as it is, but I decided to get it edited and make sure that it sounds more crisp. I could either a 
I don't have those skills myself. I could either take some tutorials online, take an audio editing course, or just trial and error my way through it and learn how to do that myself, which will require a time and energy, attention and focus investment, maybe a monetary investment if I had to buy some courses or get some lessons on how to edit audio. I could do that. That's the building part. And the buying part is if I just go find somebody who can already do it. Now, here's the thing. Many of us who are creatives, we default to building much more often than we should. Whenever we need something, we default to building. All right, we need this. All right, let me, go, let me just do it myself. All right, that needs to be done. I need somebody needs to edit this. Uh, somebody needs to create a new logo. Let me do it myself. We need to audio edit it. I'll do it myself. We need somebody to be a salesperson. I'll do it. We need someone to put together some email, uh, email automations. I'll do that as well. We need a website built. <laughs> we'll do that too. The, many of us who are creatives, especially when you're a solopreneur, when you first start off, you pretty much don't have a choice but to do everything yourself because maybe you don't have the, the revenue and the resources to get anyone or anything else to do anything for you. So you get so used to doing everything yourself that even when you get to the point that you do have resources, you keep doing everything yourself. You're like, hey, I got this far. I can do everything myself. I learned how to do everything on my own before. I can keep learning how to do things on my own and just keep going that way. So if you need a logo, do it yourself. You need someone to write copy, do it on your own. Video needs editing, you do it. And the thing is, here's the, the compounding part of this situation with creatives. We often get pretty damn good at doing everything on our own. So it's not like when you're a creative and you do everything on your own is all terrible. No, sometimes you actually become pretty good at doing things yourself. And that actually takes you further into the abyss because when you finally come across something that you can't do yourself, or maybe you can, but you're very mediocre at it, mediocre on your best day, or you can, but it's taking time away from what you actually do best. You can't see it. You don't realize it because you've been blinded by the fact that you've learned how to do everything else on your own and you've been at least good enough, proficient enough that you're like, well, forget it. I'll just keep doing everything myself. Creatives get pretty good. And solopreneurs, a solopreneur who's a creative, many solopreneurs are creatives. Actually, you know, it's many, many times the main reason why a creative becomes a solopreneur is because they are so creative and so able to do things on their own. We get good at doing things ourselves, but there are a few problems with this bad habit of doing everything on your own. This is something that I've talked about before, even in, in all the episodes where I talked about delegation. Number one problem with doing everything on your own, especially when you've been good at it so far, is that everything is not what you do best. You see, what you do best is not, quote, everything, close quote. What you do best is teaching people you no know, mindfulness, uh, teaching people discipline, confidence, mental toughness. What you do best is training athletes. What you do best is helping uh, pregnant mothers get in, get in the kind of shape so that they can still move around even though they're pregnant. What you do best is helping couples with relationship therapy. What you do best is what, whatever it is that you do best. You need to know what that is. What I do best, for example, is creating, writing and recording specifically, not creating anything, not painting art, not making clothes, but recording things like this show, recording like video, making courses, writing. Those are the things that I do best. If I'm doing anything other than that, even if I happen to have made myself good at it, I'm taking myself away from doing the things that I do best. And the things that I do best are the things that I make the most money from. They're the things that create the highest return on investment. And if you're in business, the things that you make the most money from, the things that produce the highest ROI, those matter. You should know what they are. And it actually it matters to anybody, no matter what business you're in, whether you feel like you're in business or you're not, that return on investment matters. Where do you produce the highest results? In what area of your life, what skills, do you, what skills produce the highest result for you? And then ask yourself, how are you structuring your life to where you can eventually get to the point where you're spending the majority of your time, the bulk of your time, doing the things that produce the highest return on investment? I mean, if you really think about it, doesn't that make the most sense? Isn't that where you would want to spend your time? Doing the things that produce the highest return on investment? Understand that. So this first problem is you're taking time away from your top skills and thus you are costing yourself money and opportunity. So if you think about it like this. If you're a personal trainer, and that's what you do best, or your best skill in this world is personal training, but you need a website done, so you do it. You need a logo, so you do it. You need accounting software, so instead of hiring, buying accounting software or hiring an accountant, you do it on your own. 
in everything else you think of. You need meals made, you do it yourself. You need somebody to make a, a nutrition program for your clients, you do that too. So you're doing six other things in addition to the thing that you do that you do the best. So training is the thing you do the best. Let's say training, you're worth $100 an hour, but as a, a nutritionist, you're worth $20 an hour. As a logo designer, you're worth $5 an hour. As a web developer, you're worth $15 an hour. Every minute that you spend doing web development, you're costing yourself $85 an hour because that's $15 that you're making for web development that you're worth, let's say. But you could be spending that same time training somebody where you're worth $100. So the difference between that $15 and $100 is $85. So you're costing yourself at least $85 every hour you spend doing web development. Do you understand how this is taken away from your main thing? So it's costing you money and it's costing you opportunity. You can't even be out there telling people and marketing the fact that you're good at doing the personal training because you're focused on doing something that you're not even that good at. You're only worth $15 an hour. $15 an hour is barely above minimum wage. All right? We could find anybody who could do that probably a lot better than you. And they could get it done a lot faster. And their end result will be a lot better than whatever you come up with. Why? Because you're only worth $15 an hour. How good is your end result going to be? Another problem with the bad habit of the solopreneur slash creative trying to do everything on their own is that there is someone out there, as I just said, who can do it better than you. So why would you focus your time, effort, attention, and energy, the, your most important resources, on doing something that you're not even that good at, that somebody could easily do better than you, more efficiently than you? I mean, that's, that's two good enough reasons, <laughs> better and more efficiently than you. Listen, I can edit videos. I know how to edit videos. I mean, I know enough. I can learn enough. If I wanted to really get into edit videos, I could do it. But I hate editing videos. I'm not good at editing videos. I don't even like the process of editing videos. So when I need a video edit, you know what I do? I go find someone who is much better than me, who actually enjoys editing video. This is a win-win situation. They get to do what they actually like doing, and they get paid to do it. I stay away from something that I don't actually like doing, and I can hire somebody else to do it. The next level for any creative or solopreneur out there, anybody who's a one-man show right now, is when you stop trying to do everything on your own and you start putting other people in place to do things on your behalf. It's still benefiting you, it's just you don't have to do it yourself. The good thing is, it costs you, when you put other people in place to do things for you, it's not costing you the opportunity. You don't have the opportunity to cost them anymore of not being able to do your thing, what you do best. And you are able to use your, let me back up. Let me back up what I just said there. I twisted myself up. The good thing when you're trying to do everything yourself, let's say, you just try to build on your own. It doesn't cost you any money. You don't have to pay anybody, but it does cost you an opportunity cost because you're not doing your main thing. A good thing is you're 100% in charge. The challenge is you are 100% in charge of doing something that you are merely mediocre at. You're not even that great at, so there's not even much supervision, supervision you can give to yourself. The challenge with building everything on your own is that it does cost you in time and effort. You have to do things yourself, and you're probably not that good at it. So you're doing something that you're not even that great at, so even though you can be proud of yourself for the fact that you did it on your own and you no, know, quote unquote, saved yourself money. Not really. You actually cost yourself money if you think about it with opportunity costs. Uh, the question is, how long are you going to stay in that cycle of building everything by yourself, doing everything with your own two hands? One wall that you're eventually going to run into, no matter how hard of a worker you are, how much of a hustler you are, when you are building everything on your own, is that you're going to get to a point where you can't do everything yourself anymore. If you're good enough at what you do, eventually you're going to have more opportunity. You're going to have more things that you need to get done, more uh, commitments that you're going to have to fulfill based on your main skills. And you're not going to be able to do all those side things by yourself. And you're going to need to get other people in place. And if you don't already have this mentality of having getting people in place and getting systems and processes in place that can do things on your behalf, then you're going to you're going to run smack into that wall. You ever been running full speed? Imagine if you ran straight into a wall while you were running full speed. You didn't even see the wall coming. That's what it's going to feel like if you don't get yourself in the mentality of not always building on your own. So while there are benefits to building, trust me, there are benefits to developing skills on your own. There are benefits to uh, developing that self-efficacy, knowing that when you face a challenge, you can figure it out and you can get to the bottom of it and you can get a result 
just through your own effort and your own you know, sheer you know, discipline and showing up and doing the work. But understand there are limits to it as well. So let's move on to point number two. The topic here today is building versus buying when you need something. To buy is when we go and get the needed solution that is already made and ready for our use. For example, if I need someone to, as I talked about earlier, I need someone to edit the audio, I can go find someone who is already an audio editor. They know how to edit audio. They know how to take the audio after it's edited and they can create the, they can render it into a finished audio product and they can put the introduction, the little intro we have here and the outro and if there's any ads and we need to put something in the middle of the episode, they know how to do all of that stuff. I don't have to do it myself. They can go do that. Then I can tell them, hey, we need to upload it into this uh, host and make sure it's in this RSS feed and make sure it gets aggregated to all the, the platforms, the Spotify's and the Apple Podcasts and the SoundClouds and the Stitchers and Overcast. Make sure it gets out to those places. Make sure we have a, a new post on WordPress for this episode. Make sure we grab a, make sure we make a quick audiogram, take a good audio clip out of the episode and let's get that so we can use it on social media. Let's make sure it gets shared everywhere at the moment that it comes out. And then let's make sure we put that finished file in a different folder in our cloud storage. And then let's get ready to do it again for the next episode. Then let's make sure we put the show notes so you can say, all right, when I get my first point is at this timestamp. My second point is at this timestamp. Somebody needs to do all of those things. Now I can do all of those myself. I know how to do it. Again, I know how to do it. The question is, do I want to do it? The answer is no. To buy in life, this is the second point, is when we go get that solution, it is already made ready for you. Somebody who knows how to do all those things or can easily learn how to do them and they can just follow the, follow the lead, follow the direction that they were given or they already have the skill. So when you hire an employee, you are buying the solution. When you go find a contractor, you're buying the solution. When you sign up for a SaaS service, which stands for software as a service. When you sign up for a SaaS product, instead of trying to do it yourself, you are basically buying the solution. Many SaaS products offer the solution when the decision is to buy. All right, for example, lead pages or Infusionsoft or ClickFunnels, they offer sales funnels and they offer email marketing setup. And what are they doing? They're giving you the solution that you need. So instead of you having to build all the web pages yourself and put together the whole email sequence and figure out what order they should go in, those platforms set that thing up for you so you don't have to do it yourself. Email marketing programs such as Aweber and MailChimp they allow you to reach out to a whole bunch of people via email instead of you trying to figure out how to do it yourself and you know, buying a server and signing up for IP addresses and all that. They do it on your behalf. A mock-up creator. So if you ever seen a picture of somebody selling a course and they show you like there's like a computer screen, then there's a box and then there's a bunch of DVDs and then there's booklets and there's all these things that it's showing you that you're going to get when you sign up for the course. There are programs that actually create those images for you. Now, you could do it yourself. You could if you want to. You just need to grab all these images off, off the internet, go in Photoshop, and there's a lot of moving around and adjusting and making sure it's all perfect. Or you could just sign up for this service for $10 a month and it'll do it all for you. Apps, for example, that put captions on videos. If you go online and you watch a video and you see the captions that are burned into the video, there are applications that do that on your behalf. When you use the buy option, and those are just some examples I've given you here. When you use the buy option in life, what you are purchasing is time and expertise that you would otherwise have to develop on your own. The buying option means you are buying time because now instead of you learning that skill or trying to do it yourself, maybe you already have the skill. You just don't want to do it. You can pay someone whatever amount you have to pay them and they will do it on your behalf. Now, again, you might already have the skill, but you're buying time and time is the most valuable resource that you have. So this is something that you know, I've spoken about for the entrepreneurs out there and anybody out there. You don't even have to be an entrepreneur, but you can think like one and that time is the most valuable resource you have. So you have the option of spending time or spending money. If there is any possible way that you can buy the time with your money instead of buying the money with your time, I'd rather you, I would suggest that you use the money and buy time. In other words, pay someone or something else to do the job for you so that you still have your time on your hands. The thing still gets done for you. And now you have that time to do things that maybe only you can do. Things that you can't outsource to somebody else. So the buying option allows you to purchase time. It also allows you to purchase expertise. 
that you otherwise will have to develop yourself. And it may take you forever to develop the expertise to edit videos, but there might be somebody out there who already has it. So instead of you taking five years to learn how to do video editing, why don't you hire somebody who already put that five years in, who actually enjoys doing video editing, so you don't have to grind through trying to learn something that you don't even want to be good at. Find somebody who already loves it and let them do it. Just pay them the money and they'll get it done a lot faster than you and better than you. And now you still have your time on your hands and whatever work they do still goes to your benefit. Okay. So the good thing about using the buy option as opposed to the build option is that you get results faster. You get better results probably. And you don't have to give much of your own time when you're doing this. You got to give some time because you got to go find a person, maybe talk to them, train them, watch over them, offer them you know, supervision and advice and oversight of what they're doing. But it's a lot less time than if you were doing everything by yourself. So the good part is you get results quick. Don't give much of your own time. The bad part or the drawback possibly of the buying side is that you have to give up some control over the process. You also have to pay. Uh, there is money coming out of your account, money coming out of your pocket. You do have to pay for it. And you have to give us some control of that process. And you are trusting some of that result to someone other than yourself. And a lot of people, again, who uh, condition themselves to do everything on their own, who do everything without uh, getting help from anybody. You're just used to doing everything by yourself. Every time you need a new skill or something done, you just automatically result to, resort to doing it on your own, giving up some control and put, giving someone else a, an opportunity to have some effect on what goes under your name under your representation, that might in, introduce a lot of trepidation on your part. You might not be ready for that quite so much. But understand that giving up some of that control is one of the quickest ways to move up and advance and accelerate your progress is you got to be willing to give up some control because you can't do it all yourself. You can't watch over everything yourself. Find the right people. Find people who are competent. Find people who are trustworthy. Find people who understand your mission and where you're going. And then give them some control to those individuals so that you can go where you need to go a lot faster. Again, focusing on your main skills, which have nothing to do with the thing that you've been thinking about building, but you probably should be buying. Point number three, the topic here today is buy or build when you need something additional in your life. Number three, understand that the top experts at whatever it is that they do, they usually focus only on what they're good at. They focus on the things that they built that they become great at, and then they go find everything else. They buy everything else. Steve Jobs is an example that I've used over and over here on this show. Uh, Steve Jobs was notorious for wearing the same outfit every single day because he didn't want to waste any of his brain power on things like what kind of clothes should I wear? Because he wanted to save his, his brain cells for focusing on solving the big problems of making Apple into a great company to make great products, remarkable products for remarkable people. And I think he succeeded in doing that. So when he came up with the idea for his products, like the MacBook or the iPad or iPhone, Steve wasn't in the factory, you know, building the phones. He came up with the concept. He conceptualized it. And then what did he do? He, so he built, the con he built the ability to come up with the concepts and the ideas, right? And then he bought, he went and found the people who were capable of bringing those ideas to life. So he wanted to find somebody who could create a screen for the phone that was made of glass that wasn't so easy to break though. And at the same time, that glass, somebody could swipe their finger along it and the screen would register that the, their finger had, had swiped or tapped and the phone would activate off that. He wanted a phone that didn't have any buttons. Cause you notice that the Blackberry phone, those of you who remember the Blackberry phone, the buttons would get stuck. Or if you spill something on it, the buttons would get sticky or you can get crumbs from food inside the buttons and it, it was all messy. He wanted something where the buttons were actually on the screen. So it was like a touch screen. The whole thing was a touch screen. There were no actual buttons on it at all. And I'm sure this will come a time there's not going to be any buttons on an iPhone. Right now I'm looking at an iPhone and there's a button on the side. It's like the sleep button. Then you got the volume buttons and then you got the, the ringer and the ringer off button. Eventually those buttons are going to go away. Same way they used to be the home button. Remember the home button that used to be on the phone? That little circle at the bottom of the screen? They're going to get rid of all of that. There will, there will be no buttons on this phone. I predict within the next three years, there will be an iPhone with no buttons. So y'all can uh, grab that receipt and use it against me if I'm wrong. In 2023, if there's no buttons on, if there's still buttons on the phone, then you can say I was wrong. But all that, I'm telling you that to tell you this. With Steve Jobs, he conceptualized the ideas and he would go and market them. He's the one who would go do the events and he would talk about them because he had the, the vision to explain it to everybody. But in between the concept and him explaining the finished product, he went and found, he bought the people, he bought the systems, he bought the products, he bought the materials that would allow 
those things to come to life. Now, when I say he bought the people, I don't mean, you know, he's buying them and selling them like they're indentured servants, but you understand what I'm saying. He went and found the people who had those skills, paid them a salary, paid them fairly. They did their part. He did his part and everybody wins in the end. So that's what the top experts do. Bill Gates did the exact same thing in what he did. Michael Jordan did the same thing in what he did. Michael Jordan focused on playing basketball. So he had a personal trainer who would help him get in shape. He had a business manager who would bring him the, the business opportunities and the marketing campaigns. He had his family around him to help take care of what was going on at home so he could focus on playing basketball. He had a lawyer, so anything that came up, any type of legal situation, his lawyer could immediately handle things. He had an agent, so when he came to negotiating his contract, the agent was doing most of the talking. All Mike would do was come in and sign the contract or do the late stage negotiations if he needed to be involved in it. But he had all of these other people in place. He bought these things. Again, I'm using by metaphorically. He bought these things and these people to put them all around him so he could focus on doing what he did the best. The people who are the top experts at what they do, they focus only on what they are good at, what they're great at actually, and then they put people around them to do everything else. Again, look around. If you hear of anybody that you hear of who is a top expert at what they do, or you think they're a top expert at what they do, Look deeply into how they have things set up in their life and in their business. I guarantee you, you will notice this setup. They focus on the thing that they built, which is their expertise, the thing that you probably know them for. And then they have bought everything else. That's everything else that goes around them, everything in their orbit that helps them you know, look as good as they look. There are other things and people and systems and processes in place to allow that. So the staff, the support, the knowledge. You can read a book on therapy and you know, read 200 books on therapy and try to be your own therapist for years, or you could just go hire a therapist and pay them $100 an hour. All right, which one is going to be more efficient for you? Which one is going to get the results for you? You can watch YouTube videos on getting in shape and just paste together a thousand of them and hope you come up with a good program, or you could just go to the gym and hire a personal trainer, or go on Instagram and hire a personal trainer. You could paste a bunch of web pages together and use a bunch of different uh, software products to make sure one page connects to the next page in a shopping cart and a merchant processor and hope it all works perfectly when somebody buys something or you can just go pay for some sales funnel software. What is gonna be more efficient for you? What is actually gonna produce the result? And what is going to be, the, what's gonna give you the highest return on investment? These are all questions that you need to ask and answer when it comes to building or buying. So let's recap today's class, which is, when you need something in life, will you build it or will you buy it? Again, this is a concept that I heard from uh, sales uh, maven, Mark Joyner, talking about this. this. is a question that each one of us should ask. We actually always ask when the topic is adding to what we do. Are you going to go figure it out on your own DIY? In other words, do it yourself. Or are you going to go find something or someone that already has this in place and just pay them and whatever it is that they're asking for to get this expertise without you having to go develop it and build it on your own. When it comes to building, point number one, that's developing the skills and doing things yourself. So anyone who's a creative or a solopreneur, we, when we first start out, we are used to doing everything on our own. The challenge with doing everything on our own when we first start out is that sometimes we create a good amount of success doing everything on our own and we get conditioned to keep doing everything on our own. The challenge with this is it's not what we do best, so you are taking away opportunity cost-wise from what you do best, it's the highest ROI, and secondly, we're not good at doing any other things. We're not as good at doing other things is a better way of saying it, which means there's somebody out there who could do it better than us, more efficiently than us, and it wouldn't be taking us away from the thing that we do best. So the good thing about building is that it costs you no money and you're 100% in charge. The bad thing, the challenge, is that it costs you in time and you're probably not that good at it anyway. Number two is to buy. That is when we go and get the needed solution already made and ready for use. In other words, when you hire an employee, a qualified employee, they already have the skills you need. You don't have to develop them yourself and you don't have to use them yourself. You can borrow their 40 hours a week instead of trying to come up with some out of yours. When you find a contractor, when you sign up for a SaaS product, instead of trying to do everything on your own. Many SaaS products offer this solution when the decision is to buy. ClickFunnels, email marketing programs like MailChimp, mock-up creators, apps to put captions on videos. When you use the buy option, you are buying time and expertise that you otherwise would have to come up with from yourself. The problem is you might not have it. Point number three, the top experts focus only on what they are good at, things that they have built, and then they go find everything else, things that they will buy. So that means staff, that means support, that means knowledge, that means the team around you. You can read a book on therapy or you can just hire a therapist. Now, while reading the book will be cheaper 
and you would do it all on your own and you're self-contained, the problem is you might not be any good at it. So even though you read the book and it costs you no money, there's a reason why it costs you nothing because it's worth nothing. So you can watch YouTube videos on getting in shape or you could just hire a personal trainer. You could paste web pages together or you could just pay for sales funnel software. Which one is actually going to produce the result? This is the question that you need to ask yourself. Not which one is cheaper, not which one is harder, which one is going to produce the result? Because you always must remember that what we do here in this world here, especially when we're talking here, working your game, this is a results based business, not a uh, save money based business, not a what's easy based business. It is based on what creates the results. If it costs you money to get a result, is it worth it? If it costs you time to get a result, if it costs you energy to get a result, if you need to give up some control to get a result, is it worth it? Now in the work on your game university, we go over, you will learn the nine part work on your game system, which is discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative, mindset, strategy, accountability, action, and communication. All of those have branches within them when it comes to building and buying as part of your strategy, whether, whether you're in business, whether it's just for your life in general, whether it's just your personal care, how you put your, structure your personal life. But at Work On Your Game University, we will show you the pros and cons of any action that you can take when you're strategizing. Because understand that the strategy is not just about having a perfect plan and everything goes right. The strategy is about understanding. I'm gonna get from point A to point Z, but at some point along the line, there are going to be questions. At some point, I'm going to have to make decisions. There are going to be these inflection points and you understanding how to strategize and be ready for those inflection points and how to respond to them when they come up. And if you ever run into a challenge, you got people like myself and the Work On Your Game community. That's other like-minded individuals who are serious about who they need to be, how to strategize to get there, and then how to get results from it. All of that's happening at Work On Your Game University. So if you have not joined us there yet, I suggest you go to workonyourgameuniversity.com and I'll see you in there. Work on your game. Dre, all dead.